Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we review the Warhammer 40k novel Renegades Harrowmaster by author Mike Brooks. As always with reviews, it will be spoiler free, followed by some spoiler talk on my main takeaways at the end. So let's begin as usual by checking out the synopsis off the back of the book. The Alpha Legion are devious beyond measure. But deceit is a double-edged sword. As the Indomitus Crusade pushes into the far reaches of the Ultima Segmentum, and Solomon Akura and his warband, the Serpent's Teeth, encounter the feared Primaris Marines, the Alpha Legion is faced with a choice. Fade into the shadows, or adapt and strike back. Solomon intends to take the title of Harrowmaster and bind together the feuding heads of the Hydra that make up his legion. But his allies are disparate and unproven, and his enemies march with the might of the Imperium at their back. Much is not as it seems, and the odds are stacked against the sons of Alpharius. But Solomon is armed with a weapon the Imperium cannot ignore. The Truth Okay, so it'll be a bit of a shorter one today as we've discussed some of the events of this one over the course of last week. And I've been a bit busy the past few days visiting my mum in hospital still. But I still wanted to get a review up for this one as, quite simply, it deserves it. As the synopsis states, it's set timeline-wise in the aftermath of Gilliman's launch of the Indomitus Crusade. And so we get to see the reactions of this particular branch of the Alpha Legion as they reel from the events of the galaxy. Gilliman's return, the introduction of the Primaris, and the formidable advance of the Indomitus Crusade. Personally, I always enjoy these kind of added elements to a traitor story, as it makes them feel much more connected and integral to the Imperium events we've seen transpire, the ones that are the mainstay of the mainline narrative. Just by connecting a traitor story to something of note, such as an Indomitus fleet, it immediately gives a traitor story a sense of relevance, like it matters. Unless it's Abaddon or a traitor Primarch, sometimes it can just feel completely standalone and self-contained, like it doesn't really matter if they win or lose. But not here. It feels very much a part of and connected to the galaxy. And that's a great aspect to have, when you feel like the events and repercussions of this will matter going forward. Now, the main character of this story is a Solomon Akura, an Alpha Legion legionary of the Serpent's Teeth warband, who makes a push for the position of Harrowmaster, an elected leadership position over several other warbands. And if you watched any of the videos last week, you may have heard me state how I'm not a big fan of the Heresy Era Alpha Legion, but that I found myself really being drawn to the current Era Alpha Legion. And Solomon is a perfect example why. The Alpha Legion, in being the one Legion who never retreated to the Eye of Terror, have been fighting for survival within the galaxy for 10,000 years. As such, they are fairly unique when it comes to the Traitor Legions, in that they have virtually no Marines left who were actually alive during the Heresy and Crusade. Solomon, as a Marine who's only been alive for a couple of centuries, adheres to the principles of the Legion in a lot of ways, but he's not constrained by them there's more scope and room for individuality now. You get to see more of that personality, the personal drive for power, a freedom of creativity. The current era Alpha Legion in many ways embrace what they wish of the ways of old, 
but they are no longer simply Alfarius. For example, there's a great little moment with a council of warbands, where one arrives who has dedicated themselves to the ways of the old legion. And these guys, as you would expect, all look alike and call themselves Alfarius. However, Solomon's warband simply looks at them like they're crazy. And it's this blend of Alpha Legion of old, yet not so stuck on secrets and lies within secrets and riddles all over, that really gets to show you some great personalities. Solomon's an enemy of the Imperium, no doubt about it. Yet he has no allegiance to the ruinous powers either. He fights for himself, for the serpent's teeth to claim power, and if he can reforge the Alpha Legion beneath his rule, then so much the better. Now as usual we do get a side story as well, or alternate point of view in this, with an Imperial Inquisitor, Kazan Hart. And this too was quite an interesting blend. We didn't just get a prototypical Inquisitor here. Hart is one who leans on the more radical edge. He's willing to manipulate, to take chances, suffer sacrifices to claim his objective, which is stopping Solomon. And there's an interesting flavour of him verbally and mentally duelling with another Inquisitor who too has arrived with the same objective, one just a tad more conventional. You don't see too much action with Hart, but he has such a great manner and way with words, you don't feel like you're missing it either. Now, the blunt instrument of force the Inquisitors use to take on the Alpha Legion forces are the Silver Templars chapter. And this was a refreshing change, not a first founding chapter as we so often get. Instead, a fresh new Ultima founding one. The Silver Templars at a time seemed like they were going to be big in the spotlight at one point, even getting their own Codex supplement. However, since then they've kind of faded away. You don't get a particularly in-depth look at them here, but you see enough to learn how these new Primaris chapters are quite uniquely defined by their lack of experience, and how even if the traitors aren't as physically strong, that experience can be costly. I quite enjoyed this portrayal of them. You could see the ties to their Ultramarines heritage in some ways, yet their unique character and differences still shined through. If you asked me to name some of their names now, I wouldn't be able to do it, so there wasn't any particular standout characters. However, the chapter overall really came across well. It's the sign of a great story when you don't feel a bit disappointed to be veering off to another point of view. And I personally didn't hear. The author Mike Brooks has crafted two strong and compelling characters to drive this narrative. And they are supported equally by an interesting mix of support characters. Like I said with Solomon, the Alpha Legion having a bit more out there personalities really makes the difference. The separate warbands of the Alpha Legion all feel unique. And I particularly liked a little cameo reference and nod to the Unsung, the warband from the novel Shroud of Night. You don't see them here, but it's great to see they get a little mention. And in being able to see such things as how the Alpha Legion have met and survived in secret within the Imperium, how they have kept their numbers and created new marines safely. It's quite possibly the most eye-opening glimpse into the lives of the Alpha Legion we've ever had post-heresy. I came out of this one really feeling like I understand the current Legion even more now, and that wasn't something I necessarily expected going in. I haven't read too many novels by author Mike Brooks, However, the ones I have so far have all been pretty great. Hopefully with Solomon Akura, we get a character he can create a great series of stories with. 
that an Alpha Legion legacy can be built around. For a first instalment to a possible character storyline, you'd be hard pressed to get any better. I've spoken about it a lot over the last week, so I won't make it too long today, but score-wise I'd easily give this one a 4 out of 5. An absolutely excellent read. One I really thoroughly enjoyed. I only give out the 5 out of 5 blessed by the Emperor scores for a story that gave me goosebumps. And this one didn't quite do that. However, honestly, that aside, I'd happily give this a 5 out of 5. Again, I just absolutely loved it from beginning to end. Now, spoiler-wise, there are a few standouts here. If you didn't watch last week's conversations on the Alpha Legion, then I recommend checking them out for a more in-depth discussion. There was some absolutely great little pieces in here, such as Solomon and his warband reacting to the Primaris for the first time. I love them hearing the name Silver Templars, and then them having a conversation over the Vox on what the Silver Templars were, wondering if it was a new chapter or simply a mispronunciation for the Black Templars. It was a great way to introduce Solomon and the warband that made them feel genuine, like they were real people. The biggest takeaways were the talking points of last week. Firstly, the Alpha Legion having a Dark Mechanicum Magos working with and taking care of their gene seed, and him being brought the slain Primaris to examine. Now yes, Solomon did this to understand his new enemy, but it certainly opened up possibilities of the Alpha Legion performing their own attempts at replicating the Primaris technology. If this series is continued, I'd love to see this underlying story developed. There was really a lot of similarities to Belisarius' call in the Traitor Magos, so it definitely felt like it was hinting that this could be a possibility. The second for me was the climactic ending, Solomon successfully acquiring the shards of the Pale Spear, reforging the spear for himself, the former spear of their Primarch, Alpharius. Now, he hasn't acquired the original shaft itself, so we'll have to wait and see if this is going to be an important factor. However, it's clear Solomon's intent was to use this as a symbol for his leadership, that he desires nothing less than the Legion being reformed, beneath his rule. Again, it really feels like this is just the first step in the Harrowmaster journey. And I really hope it is. Anytime you get mention of a fallen or lost Primarch's weapon, you can't help but wonder. For me, Alpharius is dead. He died at the hands of Dawn. There's no doubt about it. I believe that was even confirmed outside of the law. However, until we get to the Scouring series, Omegon's death is debatable. Could a reforging of his blade lead to a surprising appearance in the law? Solomon losing the blade to a legionary who bears a striking resemblance to Omegon? Or rumours of his reappearance beginning to surface? An unequivocal tease left open to interpretation, as is the Alpha Legion way. Ugh, man, it's something I'm already dreaming about. If Mike Brooks does get to continue this series on, I really wouldn't be surprised to see these kind of things coming into play. Though the Alpha Legion is much changed from the one it used to be, secrets, rumours, lies and mysteries are all still very much a part of their nature. And well, quite simply, that's just how great a story this was. It delivered a self-contained, complete adventure, introduced new and compelling characters, and had events that could be used again in the future to great effect. However, that's it for today. Did you enjoy everyone? Did you not? 
Or have you listened to this whole thing and you haven't even read it? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.